Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Women's Growth Series. I am Brianna Harris, and I'm here today with Corey Meredith. We both work at AIM and handle all the social media. So we are here today to provide you with what you need to know about creating content. All right, so we're gonna kick it off with identifying who your audience is and how to speak to them. Corey, you wanna start us off? Yeah, well, first off, I'm so excited to be here today and I'm so excited to talk to all of you wonderful ladies. It's always an honor being on a Women's Growth Series. I always feel so special. So thank you for thinking of me to be on today. But defining your audience is definitely the first thing you wanna think about when it comes to your online presence, social media. It's really how you speak. It's really how you create your brand. It's really about how what type of content that's gonna work. So whether you're talking to your real estate agents or your first time home buyers, your refinance um, purchases, whatever it may be, you need to identify who you wanna talk to and that will help you identify what content is gonna work for them, what tone you need to talk to these people in. It really is all about who you are talking to that's gonna make your content successful. Yeah, definitely. And think about like, if you do work with a lot of first time home buyers, what kind of things are they into? They're gonna be into probably more trendy things if they're a younger generation, if they're generation X or millennials. So how can you stay on top of trending topics or be on those social media platforms where they really identify and they're gonna see you the most? Um, we have a lot of brokers in the industry that do you know the, the work for reverse mortgages. So you're gonna work for an older clientele. How can you make your information, your Facebook business page, very clear and easy for them to find what they want to as fast as possible? Because that's what they're gonna look for. They're not out there for maybe all the ritzy ditzy. They want the meat. They wanna know what you're bringing to the table and what information you're providing. All right, so next, yeah, I mean, go ahead, sorry. One more thing on audience. You just want to make sure that your information is digestible. So whether you're talking to a millennial like myself, like personally, Instagram's my favorite app. I'm more inclined to engage with you, to, to watch your information, to, do, to follow your page on Instagram. Now, Facebook may be a better target audience for your refinance people, the people who have already purchased a home, your boomers, the people who are getting ready to maybe even purchase their second home. Um, that could be the the end or the end age of the millennials, but it's also your boomers too. And then Brianna touched on brief, um, your your reverse mortgages. So it's just really knowing who you want to talk to and who you want to target, and that kind of just creates the pattern of where you're going to post, how frequently you're going to post, the communication in which you want to talk to people in, and the digestibility, if that's even a word, of how you want to get the content out there, regardless. I've always been taught that you wanna to talk to people at a third grade to a fifth grade level. So just break it down really, really, really simplistically. And that goes across the board for any type of audience that you're targeting. I literally say that to brokers all the time, make it, if, if a third grader can understand it, then everybody else can. And that's not, it's, it's not saying anything bad about anybody, but it's, it's just very true. You never know where people are with technology, with social media, with anything, so make it, as easy as possible for them to understand what you're bringing to the table. Especially the mortgage industry, it's confusing. You know, like somebody who's not in the mortgage industry myself, I even have to get, get it broken down to maybe even a first grade level. Like really, you have to get very, very granular with these things because they're confusing and people don't do them often. You don't buy seven homes a year, you buy one home in probably your lifetime maybe two, depending on how frequently you move or your upgrade, whatever your circumstance may be, but you have all the information. So just make sure that it's digestible to whoever you're talking to. Absolutely. So this goes into our next portion that's really important is identify your brand. What makes you, you? Um, there's every single person in this industry has characteristics that are unique from the next person. Make a list of what makes you you and how you can use those aspects of yourself to connect with your audience. That's what you want to do. You don't want to just sell and push your that you're a mortgage broker and you want to refinance a home. You want to build a relationship that's going to last. I think one of the major things that I always, always, always say, but I have to hold true to it is that people like people. The more that you're able to be relatable, that you can connect with people, those are gonna build relationships organically. You don't even have to try. Just 
be yourself, whether you're being yourself by posting a hobby that you really like, or you're creating a video and you're just being authentically you, regardless of how how great it looks on screen or how comfortable you are making it, or, or this might not be really relevant to the mortgage industry, but it's who I am. People like people. And at the end of the day, those posts that are just about you are going to do better anyway. Yes, absolutely. And, and it really is even the most minuscule thing. Corey said something that I thought was so brilliant earlier, that the things that seem so average to you can be such a big, important connecting factor to somebody else. I spoke with a broker the other day and he has a really amazing handlebar mustache. Well, that's a, an amazing way to connect with people. You know, it's you're going to connect with those first time home buyers, those millennials who like are like, wow, this guy's really cool. I thought mortgages were kind of scary. And I thought that talking to a mortgage broker would be terrifying, but he seems really relatable and easy to talk to. So keep that in mind when you're creating everything. Yeah, All right. and of course you want to put your pr most professional foot forward. No doubt, it's your business. You want to give it a build credibility. You want to put your most positive foot forward, but also be yourself. This helps to create your brand. If you're a little bit more sarcastic or whimsical, trickle that into what you say. Now, obviously there's a fine line between that, but be you. If you're a little bit more funny, have joke around, joke around a little bit. Or if you like memes, utilize them. If you're really follow guidelines, be you. It's fine to be detail oriented. Now people know exactly who you are. They know what to expect and they know who they're working with ultimately before they even start their transaction. Absolutely. All right. So when it comes to creating content, it's really important to make a blueprint, make a strategy, write down what the best ways to connect with your audience are and brainstorm off of that. Corey and I brainstorm several times a week. We are big. It's my on favorite plan. thing to do. <laughs> it, it really is. We get really excited for our brainstorming meetings because we will plant a little seed. We'll see something. We listen to all of you all, all the time. We are, we're in the groups. We hear your questions. We, we read everything that you put out. And those things to us are tiny little seeds that spread into all of the content that we create for the community. So there are certain things to think about when you are creating your blueprint. You want to inspire. You want to inform and educate, you want to entertain, and you want to connect. So we're going to dive into each of those categories and how you can build content off of it. So we'll start with Inspire. Okay, yeah, go. Inspire is a really, really good one. Now, this can be just helping others. You know, you want to you want to be there for other people. You want to inspire other people. So whether that's helping somebody who with a hard loan or helping a veteran or or just being there for your community, it's really just about giving back and trying to make, it's, it's almost a testimonial for yourself. You don't need anyone to leave it for you, but as long as you're doing the right thing and you're helping out your community, you're inspiring others. And ultimately that's a cycle. Everyone likes to be inspired. And the more that you can help others, the more other, the more others want to help you. Absolutely. Have you ever worked with a borrower that never thought that they could get into a home who had a really tricky situation. Um, they had a bunch of stuff that you had to fix and all they wanted was this house for their family and you helped them get into that house. Talk about that. Make sure it's okay with your borrower if you want to share certain information, but find a way that you can put that story out to let other people know that they can come to you, that you're going to nurture that loan, that you're going to have that relationship with them and that you're going to get them into that house. That speaks volumes as to who you are as a person and who you are as a mortgage broker. And just taking that one example, content that you could build around that, don't, yes, it's great to have a picture with the person, but you don't even have to. Take a picture of the house, take a picture of the sign that says closing, take a picture with that person. I mean, sure, you want to do video, you want to get testimonials, that's all meat and gold, but it's not 100% necessary all the time. As long as the story's there, you can tell that story in a way that's unique to yourself, going back to your personal brand, and it inspires other it, others, it inspires the person that you worked with, and that's the testimonial in itself. If they leave you a review, great. You can post that review, you can explain the situation, you can grow upon that, but also just a simple picture of like their house, the closing sign, the for sale sign, the one that says sold, whatever it may be, it doesn't even have to be super, super personal to that person, as long as it's personal to you and your business and other people can see that. Yeah, and when you're writing the content for that, 
those inspiring moments should really be the things that drive you as a mortgage broker and make you at the end of the day be like, wow, this is why I love my job. So put your heart into, into what you write. Let your audience know. Mm -hmm. All right. Another good next. example of inspire. Wait, one more. <laughs> Another good example of inspiring is if you do something with your team. If you <laughs> if you give back to your local food bank, or if you're running a charity donation for jackets during the winter time, whatever it may be. Now, don't use it to flaunt your business or be like, "Oh, we're so good at giving back." But it's a way to make your community know that you care. And at the end of the day, people want to work with people who care. That's really ultimately the best marketing strategy out there is genuine care. And I feel like as mortgage brokers in our local communities, that's one reason why brokers are better because we're there. We see the life that they, they these people live. We know the communities that we live in. And we actually care about making their tomorrow better than their today. That's an awesome point. All right. So our next section is inform and educate. This is huge, and as two women that spend a lot of time figuring out different ways to help you inform your borrowers, this should be one of the easiest outlets for you. So with Inform and Educate, how are ways that you can show not only clients, but partners? How can you show them that you are the pillar of knowledge, and if they want to know something about mortgages, they come to your Facebook business page to find that information? Mm-hmm. To a T, to a T. Building off what Brianna said, we read all of your comments. Brokers are better, Women's Mortgage Network. We identify your questions, we identify your pain points, and we try to create valuable content based off those things. If you guys follow the Brokers Are Better community page, not to be confused with the group, but the community page, we post a lot of this shareable graphics on that page so that you guys can use it for your audience. It's beneficial to you because it helps first time home buyers understand the process better. It may help real estate agents with processes that they can't explain or are a little bit trickier to explain. And where do we get these ideas? We don't work in real estate. We don't work in mortgage. We work for AIM. We read and we listen to you guys. And I think that's one tip that you guys can do for yourselves. If you wanna create this content on your own, listen to your real estate group that you're a part of. When you have home buyers, what are some frequently asked questions that they are always presenting to you? Take those things, that, those knowledges that you already have in your mind, you don't even have to dig too deep for them and say, okay, how can, I, how can I make this more efficient, basically? How can I turn this piece of knowledge into something that I can share with people to educate them? And by doing that, you're framing yourself as the expert and then they trust you, your credibility gets built up. Again, I'm always about these cycles of like trust and build and grow, but it's really how this industry works. It's really how content in general works. Like identifying those pain points and providing answers and value is undeniably one of the greatest pieces of content out there. Yeah. And, and when you think about those, I always tell brokers, think about the top three most frequently asked questions you get from borrowers. How can you turn that into content? It doesn't have to be a graphic on Canva or a post. Make it a video. Make it a 30-second video. Hey, guys, this is one of the most frequently asked questions I get from first-time home buyers. Say the question and give an answer. Boom, done. Makes you look like you are really connecting and listening with your borrowers and that you are the person to go to for the information. And the same thing and with those graphics. Something. Yep. Yeah, that's the same you thing with those graphics. Just because we make those graphics doesn't mean that you have to use the graphic. You can turn that into a video. That's a really easy way to get started. Or, or turn it into whatever makes sense for you. You know, like yeah. if you're more of a status person, make it a status. If you want to do a video, make it a video. But Brie, you did say a scary word and that's video because a lot of our audience doesn't like to create video. And trust me, like I'm not even a big fan of video myself. Like I'm not really afraid of it, but I don't prefer to do it. Um, so, but I think when you're creating video, you have to go back to the people like people and your personal brand. Don't strive for perfection. Nobody is perfect. And that's a misconception that society has really taught us about social media. You go on Instagram and you see all the models or you go on Facebook and you get all the advertisements, whatever it may be. Don't think that you have to be like that because truthfully, no one's like that. And I know it's very cliche to say, but it's true at the end of the day that like, you just have to be yourself. Your personality will shine through and people will like you and want to work with you just because you're being you. That builds the relationship organically and uniquely. And hey, it helps with your content too. 
It does. It really makes you stand out. I'm going to throw out two names that I've seen their videos and I've seen their bloopers and it is ingrained in my mind forever. One is Mo Hernandez. I love her bloopers. I think they're so fun and it makes me want to watch her videos even more. And then Nicole, Nicole Perennial, she makes these really funny. She's not afraid to be herself. She dances. She get, has fun with it. Be unapologetically who you are. Don't ever try yeah. to be something that you're not because everybody will be able to see it. When you're being yourself, Definitely. people feel that. And getting a little bit back on track with the inform and educate, I think brokers really have a leg up here because like I said previously, the mortgage industry is confusing and it's scary. It's a big, big investment that you're asking somebody to make. And you guys have a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of knowledge. So break that into really, really small pieces. Not only are the, what are the most frequently asked questions, what's a term, what's an appraisal, what's a loan, what does that entail? Break it down into things that seem so simplistic to you because I guarantee you it's very, very advanced to other people who don't know anything about the industry. So really utilize this one blueprint of the inform and educate to think of, okay, what value can I bring to my community? What value can I bring to my real estate partners, my referral partners, my potential clients, my previous clients, et cetera, and try to answer those questions and use that audience segmentation that you previously defined in our step two or step one and uh, build off of that. Mm -hmm. One more shameless plug before we go to the next section is Jackie Dunlap does an amazing job at taking something that could be really confusing for a lot of people and relating it to real world things. Like she does some restaurant business, like relationships, like how, how can this thing in the mortgage industry that seems so confusing relate to something that people deal with every single day. So think about that too. Think about ways, just break it down for people. Go back to when you were first in the industry and how you finally understood this information. Cause it's a lot, we know. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you guys say it all the time. You, you talk about these analogies and you describe different parts of the, of the loan process or the expectations that you set up front, turn it into a video, make a short little mm -hmm. video. You're already dressed up to talk to the client. So, Hey, just flip the camera around. Yep. Nice all. all right. Next is entertain. This is probably my favorite. And this plays into what we were just talking about, being yourself, having fun, make videos, entertain your clients. But I also think that this is a good one too, because not everyone's funny. Not everyone's super entertaining. Mm -hmm. I'm one of those people. I really have to try to like get a group to laugh at me. Like it's not my forte, but I also like to make fun of myself. So if I mess things up, I'm going to post that blooper. That falls in the entertainment category. That gets people to know you better. It, it makes you relatable. And hey, what do I say all the time? People like people. I'm going to start making everyone say it with me. But it's so true. <laughs> like, if you can be relatable and people can see that you're human, they're not scared to talk to you. They're not um, nervous about the process because they know that you're being upfront and you're just being you. Yeah, exactly. And and to entertain doesn't mean that you have to put on a skit or sing a song. That's that's not at all what we're saying. It can be Skylar Welch to, does a great job at she dressed up as the what was it the fairy mortgage the yeah and then, and so that was cute. <laughs> so cute. It was her and her new loan processor, and they dressed up as the fairy godmother of mortgage and posted a picture. That is entertaining. People love it. It show showcases. Uh, a fun side of her and helps her connect to her audience. So think about different mm -hmm. ways that you can, if it's a holiday and your family say your family wears ugly sweaters around Christmas, that's entertaining. Post a picture of that or have your entire office have a Halloween party where everybody has to dress as something funny. Just think about different ways that you can play off of entertain and not make everything that you're posting on your business page so tight and professional and, you know, figure out some ways to make it, make it fun. Yeah. And I have to give a quick shout out to the Ailers too. They do a great job at this. Mm -hmm. I know Ryan is a big marketing guy and does all the editing and it always looks so phenomenal, but even turning like super superhero uh, skits into mortgage relatable things like that takes some time and playing and effort. So I'm not saying you have to start there, but as long as you can kind of make it relatable to the industry, if you want to, you don't even have to just be yourself, but Try, trickling in the educate with the entertain, something that the ALS do really, really well. Yeah, 
And it can, you know, I, I know a big pain point that a lot of brokers face is like, all right, these are, these are great, but how, how do I have time to do this? Think about things that go on in your life, things that you're like, oh my gosh, this was so funny, or, or my kids did this. You can post that on your business page. You can make it like, I know I've been closing a lot of deals this month, but I've also been an amazing mom and my kid did this funny thing and share that. That's entertaining, easy way to connect. It does not have to be something where you take a half an hour of your time out, try and rehearse like all these things. Don't make it harder than it needs to be. Talk about the processes that happened to you that day. Just post mm -hmm. about it. Do a quick little, even a story. Stories are super, super popular. They're really becoming even more popular than posts at certain times. So if you're familiar with Facebook stories, LinkedIn stories, Instagram stories, Twitter has fleets now, like really any platform that you use, it will help you get more comfortable with creating video too. And it only it's 15 seconds long. So that helps. And it only stays up for 24 hours. So if you're not super comfortable, you're like, Oh, I don't really like this. It's not there forever. So mess around with stories and get comfortable with creating video content. If you're very, very, very scared to jump in. But I think that's a good good place to start. Yeah, absolutely. And and one thing that I had to take it like keep in mind when I first started working for AIM and I've been doing I've been working with social media since I've graduated from college, but one thing is it's okay to not get a ton of engagement on every single post. That does not mean that you did something wrong. You're going to get that. You're going to have your ebbs and flows with with posts. When you're posting, what you're posting, everything, it's okay. Just stay consistent. Keep at it learn from what people like and try and figure out ways that you can branch off of that. A lot of it is trial and error. And as somebody mm -hmm. who does this full time, there's not a clear cut answer. Like, I wish I could tell you this works, this doesn't work, this works, this doesn't work. It's different for every brand. It's different for every season. It's different for every approach. So it's really about trial and error. But I think the major thing you have to keep in mind is consistency. As long as you're consistent with trying, the effort will show. And you're going to see metrics based off of that. It's the same thing if you're working out all the time. Yeah, you're not going to lose five pounds the first day you work out. But if you keep going to the gym, and eating healthy and being consistent, that's when you start to see results. There's no difference here. Absolutely. All right, so the last portion, this is the biggest one. We've been saying it this entire time. It's connect. This is so important to find a way to connect with your audience. Not even your audience, but with each other. And Brianna mm -hmm. is queen of this. How many of you watching this live stream right now know her face? know who she is like literally drop a like if you're like yeah i know who brianna is because chances are you've talked to her you've seen her you've engaged with her she's engaged with you that's how you build relationships too and at the end of the day we're in a relationship business if you have a long-lasting relationship with a referral partner a real estate agent that business is going to come and it's going to keep coming so one good way to do this is to connect with your audience through yes posting of course but also engagement we have two great groups for that, but they're not the only groups out there. I'm sure that you guys have your own personal groups within your local community. Make sure that you're engaging and connecting there because like I said previously, one of the reasons why brokers are better is because we're in our local communities. We care about the people within our local communities. So connect and know what's happening in your communities. And then the cycle happens once again. Yeah, take, take time out to get to know the people that you're working at, working with. Katrina Tobias in Maine does a great job with this. She goes to workout classes with some of her clients. She, she really makes her client, she has a lot of passion behind what she does and she builds those connections. Just as Corey said earlier, I really genuinely care about each and every one of you. I like to know that you're starting a new workout class or your kid just started first grade or anything like that because that that's a way that I can connect with you. And that's a way that when I see something going on in the industry, something that can help you, I know that, okay, I need to connect this person with this and build that bridge. And so find ways to connect with your audience. Keep an eye on what they're mm -hmm. doing. And that's also ways that you can send them cards or congratulations, or when they're coming to you for different things, it's a way that you know how to talk to them because that's a big thing. You're not going to talk to every single one of your clients the same way. You need to tailor what you're saying, how you say it to adjust to that client and what that client identifies with. Yeah. And you care. We all care. Everyone at AIM cares. Like we are here yeah. 
to help you. And really connecting doesn't take all that long. You have a long day at work, sure, but you're in bed scrolling through your phone anyway. So hop in one of the groups, read a couple of things, write a couple comments, be done for the day. It doesn't take that long, five, 10 minutes out of your day, 15 max is sufficient. And of course, you can spend all day in the groups. Yes, they're very active. Yes, there's a lot of information free flowing and you wanna help out as many people as possible, most definitely. But if you're busy and overwhelmed, you know, take it in, take it in spurts. Yeah, um, a cheat that I have is if I'm on my phone, it's late at night, I'm scrolling, and I see something that I'm like, hmm, I could either make content around this or this is something that I need to remember about this person for the future. I will take a screenshot and email it to myself so that I have something to go back to, to reference, to be like, oh yeah, I almost forgot I wanted to make content about this because I saw this person talking about it or oh yeah, it's this person's birthday, let's get them a card out. So. So I mean, a CRM thing. helps that too, but <laughs> a CRM helps. But if it's late at night and you're not on your computer, you do what you got to do. This is true. <laughs> you got to start somewhere. Yes, exactly. And the the biggest thing is is just don't be afraid and put yourself out there. Be vulnerable. If you know how to use Canva, use it. Use the content that we give you guys. Put your logo on it. Create your own content. Create some videos. You just got to get into it. And I, I know it can feel like a giant time suck. Like you're like, how am I going to find time to do this? Something that I tell some people is, it, you know, somebody in high school that can pro possibly help you out, have them help you or set every Sunday night is my big time to try and roll out the next week's content. Set just some time aside whenever you can block off an hour, two hours, 30 minutes and dedicate that to figuring out ways that you are gonna post on your Facebook. Mm -hmm. And we really preach it because it's so important. I had someone not too long ago message me because I'm in charge of AIM social media. So they messaged AIM and they wanted feedback on an AIM broker. And the reason that they were asking was because they went on, they Googled them and they went on their, they went on their website and they didn't have any Google reviews. If you're not active on social media, like that's where you build your credibility that's where you build your authority kind of too. Um, so just make sure that you're cognizant of these things because this is how the new generation is looking for people. They're not looking through the red, the yellow pages. I almost called it the red books. I don't, I don't even know what they are anymore, <laughs> but you get my point. Like you need to know what your audience is looking for. Wow, look at that full circle again. Back to our tip number one. You need to know what your audience is looking for. You need to know how they're identifying what's important to them and you kind of got to build your business around that too. Yeah. And steal like an artist. Don't be afraid. Oh this, yeah. That's a my favorite. The, yes. A lot of the brokers we mentioned, they do an amazing job with their social media. Go look at what they're doing. See what is resonating the best with their audience and figure out ways that you can make it your own. Don't feel like you have to reinvent the wheel. I, we, we, mm -mm, we find a lot of different ways that we can take material from a bunch of different places and make it our own and get it out to you guys. And yeah, and we customize it to a way that we know is gonna resonate the best with you. So just keep yeah, that in mind as, couple, as you're creating. I have a couple points in closing. One, don't overthink things. Trust me, the simpler, the better. So don't try to think of a content that's, piece of content that's gonna go viral. Start small, figure out what you can explain quickly and easily that's gonna be beneficial to your audience. Two, Seriously, visit the Bab community page. We have a lot of this content already created for you. Steal it, for real, steal it. We have a we have a portion on the graphic that is there for your logo. Please utilize it if it if it makes sense for your business. Don't do it if it doesn't make sense, but we hope that it makes sense. And if it doesn't make sense, let us know because we want to present value to our audience, and you guys are our audience. So if we're doing something that you know, we, you think we could do better or if we're missing on a topic that's super important to you and your referral partners, your real estate agents, your audience just in general, let us know and we will work on creating content that's valuable in that area. And I challenge you guys to do the same. Look at your, look at your audience, identify pain points in your local area or your topic of interest and try to create content based off of that, providing value and answering questions without being salesy. People are not going to, buy your product if you keep saying buy my product, buy my product. You need to create a fine line of, yes, I'm a mortgage broker, I'm an advocate, I'm an advisor, but you also need to be relatable a person so that they want and are more inclined to work with you.
Absolutely. And what Corey said, if there is something that you as a broker needs something, if you want us to create content around something, if you want to be further educated on something, let us know. That is what we're here for. The entire AIM team is here to support you in the best way that we can. You are our main, supporting you and helping your business run smoothly is our main goal at the end of the day. So check out the BAB community page. Let us know what you think. If you have questions about anything, if you need support in any way, the entire AIM team is here to help you. Corey and I are always available. We live on our phones due to the social media, but we are, and, and we really <laughs> That's enjoy the community. Yeah, we're always on it. And we generally enjoy this community. We love making the connections with you guys. And we hope that you got some good pieces of information today that you're gonna be able to use on your social media pages. And if you have any questions, please just let us know. All right. We're here all the time. <laughs> all the time. All right, everybody. I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening and we will see you shortly. Bye.